So the types of rules that you have to, that you're working on is, um, I mentioned this, are things that are related to your business glossary definition. So these are like functional high level things where you tie them, we call them quality attributes. Um, they can also just be general standalone rules that are related to uh, just a business rule or policy. And these are things you're not gonna relate them to a business glossary term because you know, it's hard to pick like one term. So you know, a business glossary term might be birth date is required and you've got a business glossary entry for birth date. Uh, another thing saying that um, you know, no student that is uh, you know, enrolled in this particular program is allowed to have, you know, has to be of this age or something like, you know, you might be something that where birth date is, a, is an attribute of that or age is an attribute of it, but it's really more of a, of a complicated thing that involves lots of glossary terms. So you can just define these general rules and they don't have to be referential integrity kind of things. You know, they can be business rules as long as you sort of define a way to test it that, oh, I want to test it. There's no one that's allowed to be enrolled in our, you know, beer making class that isn't over the age of 21. Like that could be the rule. And, um, and you can build a way to test that and to measure it and assess that. Um, and, and that's, that's not something that's going to be a database rule, right? That's something that's going to be a business rule, um, but you can still use data quality to monitor it. Uh, the last one is this concept of database integrity and you can set these up too. You know, you can define a rule based on, you know, this foreign key relationship or whatever. Uh, again, that is, um, sort of simple to identify. It takes, there's a high volume of that stuff. And most oftentimes it's not a problem because the databases enforce it pretty well. So we don't really recommend spending a whole lot of energy on that because there's also a fair amount of sort of native tools and a lot of databases to do that. Obviously, if you have an, a, an issue that has been reported, then you want to create a rule around that. Um, so, now, you know, I mentioned going outside of this, you can do, you can create rules to sort of enforce policy or de detect fraud. Another rule that, that we've recently been talking about is using data quality to manage data retention rules. So you can set up a rule you know, if someone talks about what's the life cycle of your data, and one of the things is like, we don't want to keep any, you know, applicants or applications on, you know, in the database for more than two years or whatever, or anyone who is requested to be forgotten has, can't have their data in there for more than one year. Um, that's a data retention policy rule, and you can set up a data quality rule to monitor, to assess that, and to, uh, you know, to report things that are exceeded that, that rule. Um, so functional rules, you want to, you know, the, the, the finest thing is sort of, it's similar to the way that we do our, our business glossary. You've got your high level, um, you know, business definitions, uh, system agnostic definitions for things like, oh, visit birth date is required. Um, there's different validation types, the valid values, required, a data type, invalid characters, length, range, a regular expression, complex validations, which could be sort of more complicated things. You know, there's all sorts of different ways to do, to do validations. Um, uh, but the point is that, 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 you know, at the, functional side, you're really talking about it not uh, system specific. You know, you don't have a rule that's like, you know, birth underscore date in, in per table, you know, can't be null, right? That's, a, that's uh, not a good functional rule name. So technical rules are the things that really define how to test them and how to monitor them. So you know, it gives you guidelines for assessment, research, and monitoring and documenting where these things live and how to test them. Uh, they allow for development of assessment reports or for the automated monitoring that we have with the cookbook. Uh, and we're able to do that with our integration suite. I mentioned that we do system integration. So we have a, a packaged uh, middleware component that sits within your network and gets configured to talk to all your data systems. And it does three main things. It does the um, technical metadata synchronizations for your data catalog stuff, which we've talked about in other meetings. It does reference data synchronization, which is somewhat related to this, but but the point of this, it does your data quality monitoring. So if you've defined technical rules up in the cookbook, it'll pull those and it'll run them and generate the assessments and push them up. And if the assessments have exceeded the threshold, it'll start an issue, right? So that's how that, that works. So how do you do a, a data quality rule? Now our system, there's various tools for doing data quality monitoring. We take a very pragmatic approach. Um, some of the tools, you know, require like aggregating all the data in one system and doing very complicated statistical analysis or whatever on, the, on that that data. And, and, and there's some really cool stuff that you can do with that. But our approach is to say, we're going to go test the data where it lives in the systems that it lives. Now, that doesn't stop you from aggregating data in your own warehouse and testing things there to compare things between systems or whatever. But uh, from a simplicity standpoint, we're not requiring any of that infrastructure. As long as we can connect to one of those systems, we're going to be able to test your, your rules in that system. And we do it with queries primarily. So, um, uh, when you go create a technical rule, you want to define the things that are either allow us based on the validation type to generate the query, or you give us the query itself if it's a more complicated rule. 
And we use three different queries, a scope query, a test query, and a research query. And, and you probably have picked up on this from before. The scope query is the thing that says like, how many people do I have? Oh, you have 100,000. The test query is how many people do I have who don't have a birth date? Oh, there's 48, right? So now I've got my assessment, 48 out of 100,000. If you've exceeded the threshold, the third thing, and this is an optional thing, but very powerful, is what we call the research query. If it's not a count, but this is an actual query, you can go back into the data and say, all right, for the things that failed the record, give me a sample of those records with some useful information. And you can define what those, those research fields are. Usually it's something like, oh, the key of the field, when the, the create date, the create user, add date, you know, change date, change user, uh, you know, the actual value if it's relevant. So, so that you can get to the root cause analysis and, and clean up. Um, you, know, you want to kind of make sure that you're just looking at a sample, that you're not you know, creating something that's going to pull in a million records. We have that sort of baked into our integration. There's, there's hard-coded caps for that. The threshold is the other aspect there for defining how it's going to um, put. And you can set a severity just for the point of, of, of um, your own informational purposes, like how, bad, you know, how important.